why people like podcasts. They like Joe Rogan. Going to Bali, going to Thailand and like meditate with the elephants. Kentucky tours. Why people are into recycling things, upcycling things. They always go on these places where it seems very risky and dangerous. Skydiving, slacklining. Camping, boating, hiking. They like eating ice cream, brunch. White people love a good salad. Microbreweries. Vegemite, they love it. And the toast. Barbecues. GNT, a good GNT. Kissing dogs on the mouth. Axe throwing. You have hobbies, proper hobbies like pottery. I have dated a lot of white people. <laughs> I have dated many white people, yes. Yes, I have dated white people. Well, I'm dating a white person now. My uh, partner's white. If I were to start a conversation with a white guy on a dating app, I would maybe go with like, do you need me to bring sunscreen? Oh, hey, do you want to come check out this huge jar of mayonnaise I got? Thankfully, I'm a good looking brother. I got fairly good slick talk. We can make D1 babies. So that's my opening line and it worked. Do you have a sunburn? Because I can apply aloe vera. <laughs> oh yeah, I love ABBA. I have a photo of my shirt off and like gym, very gym related stuff. Even though they say they don't like toxic stuff, they get a bit intrigued. I have more or less a lot of white friends, but dating them it doesn't make me feel excited. They don't like spicy food. It's hard for me to, to date someone who doesn't like spicy food. If I had pick up lines for white people, I'd be slaying. I date anyone and everyone, so I don't have a particular preference. I have a preference for dating white people, specifically white men. I wanted to break the stereotype that Indian people only date Indian people, so I was rebelling against that. I think it's just my taste in people. <laughs> to a degree, it's because they don't really have the cultural expectations that I would have. Every now and then when I see an interracial couple, I will most certainly lock eyes with the Indian person in the couple. And we'll exchange a glance that says, I won't tell your parents if you don't tell mine. It's a glance that also says, uh, yeah, we sold out. White people aren't a preference for me when it comes to dating. It may have been when I was younger. I would consider myself an equal opportunity lover. As someone who's been on the shitty tail end of racial preferences, I like to go into dating apps with an open mind. I think my dating pool was reflective of the spaces in which I was located. As I was getting older, and more involved in ethnically diverse communities more broadly, my dating pool expanded. Having a white partner means that depending on what type of shop we're in and what suburb of Sydney, I get better customer service. When I'm with a white woman, we might be able to get out of the fine or like a late fee or something. I find sex with white people far less complicated. I'm too much in my head when I'm having sex with an Indian woman. I'm wondering, is this going to lead anywhere? Are we going to have a family? How many kids are we going to have? There's too much to think about. With white people, it's just like, you can have fun. You can just milk cultural holidays. Like, I'm the worst Muslim ever. I don't even fast for the whole of Ramadan, but when Eid comes around, I'm like, give time. Being biracial and being half white, even though I might have that background, because of my name and because of my appearance, I feel like I don't have white privilege. The white privilege does rub off on me. They make me look whiter. I have benefited from that white privilege and I'm fully aware of it, but I'm not a massive fan of it. <laughs> With white women especially, they will be sincere about suggesting to pay for half of it or even the dinner. But with Indian women and Asian women, some of them maybe pretend to take their wallet out. You're like, oh no, I'll pay, oh, I'll pay. It's not a real fight, it's not a sincere fight. Interactions with the police are a lot nicer to you when you're in a group of white people. So much nicer than when I'm with, say, my Tuklaoan cousins. You can actually mansplain as much as you want, but only if it's cultural. Whenever I see an Indian girl dating a white guy, I'm like, yeah, well done. You've got their white privilege, their male privilege. You've won the lottery. As a marriage celebrant, I have done a lot of weddings that are cross-cultural, where it's been a white person marrying an Indian person. You can definitely see the difference between two sides of the family. When you're dating a white person, you are dating just them. 
When you were dating a ethnic person, you were dating the whole family. If I broke up with a white person, I feel like it's very civil. I wish you the best, you wish me the best, and we move on from here. Now, if I broke up with someone with my own culture, their family would pretty much resent my family and vice versa. Right, when's the wedding day? Which I don't think happens with when you're dating a white person. With Indian people, no, that's different. If you're dating someone, next stop, marriage. I found that a lot of white people yell at their, their own parents and get aggressive towards them. Why don't you just put your foot down and, and set your boundaries and say no to your parents? No, we can't do that. I'm not allowed to do this. They would, <laughs> they would kill me if I do this. I'm playing diplomat between my very demanding Indian parents and my white partners. In comparison to, say, dating a brown person, I would definitely struggle because for a lot of families, I'm not brown enough. <laughs> if I brought home a flower, for my significant other that was white, she'll be very content. But if it was like a Middle Eastern girl's, this Bottega flower, she'd probably throw it in the bin. So yeah, you got the flowers, but where's the chocolates? When I'm with my partner, I feel from communities of color that I'm like a sellout, like I'm going against my race. White people, it's like slightly more respect that all oh, you're one of the good ones, oh, I can relate with you. With dating POC, sometimes it could be a bit difficult if you're queer, simply because some people aren't out yet. It's very difficult dating white men as a Muslim woman because there's so many things that they don't understand about our faith. In Islam, we don't drink. Australia, drinking culture is a huge part of how people bond, how people connect. When I was trying to get my partner to become, you know, interested in Islam, because right now he believes in crypto. My parents don't have much of a preference on who I date, but um, definitely <laughs> my grandmother would love to see me with a with a Greek boy. I remember dating someone and sharing with my family a picture of the person that I was dating, and <laughs> one of their initial reactions was, oh, they're white. Because <laughs> I think they were expecting that I was going to be dating non-white people because of some of the... Uh, views and, and perspectives that I have on whiteness. My family doesn't have a preference in who I date and nor have I been told who to date. They would like it to be Middle Eastern Muslim Kurdish, what I am. However, they always said at the end of the day, if you love someone, you love someone. It doesn't matter what race. My great auntie and stuff would make comments like saying, find an Asian girl and get married and have kids like you're at that age now. I mean, they've been saying that for like nine years. My mum said to me, she's nice, but would be better if she was Indian. You know, even if she was a nice Asian girl, you could marry an Asian girl. They're widening my horizons for me, which is wonderful. But I think one more year when, when they're really desperate, they'll allow white women. Surface level, they seem fine, but the vibe I got from them was different from when I brought home someone that's within my race, especially mum. Meeting my partner's family was very scary because it was the first time I had to ask my partner to drop some subtle hints that I was African before I got there. Tell them your girlfriend's highly likely to come first in a 100 meter sprint. She's good at dancing. I just wanted them to know. I'm prepping them a lot. Just smile and nod and let them be racist at you. <laughs> there was an early moment in our relationship with my partner and I where she came and met my family for the first time. They get really like anxious, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be here. Your family sounds angry. And then I was like, well, what do you mean? And then she said, oh, you, you know, you guys were like fighting about something, right? Everyone was yelling at each other. And I had to be like, oh, that's just how we talk. And I'm like, they're literally talking about what to make for dinner. <laughs> like, we'll just loudly Chinese yelling about where to get dinner that night. I have to prep both of them, both my partner and my parents. Their first question for some unknown reason is, what does your partner's parents do? I always just say, never say no to food. Don't be afraid to ask for something because um, sitting there silently is not gonna fly. My dad is quite loud and to just prepare for that because you could be telling a story and my dad will fully cut you off. People love a good sliced bread. They love a good toast. 
bread, bread, bread. We were staying with my partner's family out in the countryside and the only thing they had to eat during the day were ham sandwiches. And I think at one point, like 10 days in, I was just crying into a ham sandwich because I was so sick of them. I remember I sat through an entire family dinner where we listened to nothing but the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. We don't do that in ethnic households. I don't like pavlova because it just feels like in my mouth. I just don't understand what's happening with the flavors. You've got Devon. You got pigs in a blanket. I would love to see more seasoning in white people's cupboards. Less schnitty, more curry. Our family, when we come over to someone's house, we'll normally bring a big dish or plated food. From experience, from bringing white people over, they won't bring anything. I generally will buy lots of different things to share with everybody. I think they're a bit surprised at first that I would do that, but for me, that's just naturally what you do, coming from a Pacific culture that you share what you have. With white families, you know, you just usually have the main family and that's that's it really, and maybe, maybe grandparents. Whereas with ethnic families, it's huge. You got your grandma, grandpas on both sides sometimes, your aunts, your cousins, your neighbours sometimes. <laughs> Pretty much everyone, like the whole village is there. It goes on till like morning, till midnight, and then you got to say goodbye to everybody. It's a whole event and it's exhausting. <laughs> After we finish the food, we say thank you, but not only this, myself, or um, the fellow cousins will go and um, do the dishes. So my partner does come along to, you know, cultural events, like all the Chinese New Year meals and that type of stuff. And she has come to terms with the fact that going to all these Chinese New Year events does mean that she's gonna gain weight. My dad loves to cook and he made a really lovely pork roast and having a good time. And he leans next to me and really quietly whispers, um, are we, are we allowed seconds? And my dad did hear it, even though he whispered it, and was outraged. <laughs> he just said, there's enough for you to have thirds and fourths and fifths, like eat as much as you possibly can, and then there's dessert. I'm cooking enough food to kill the person who's coming. I want them to eat so much food. This is when I learned that white people make one meal per person. It's like the bare minimum. Don't know why. I'm still hungry, I will be going to Macca's on the drive home. When their opening message is something like, oh, you look kind of ethnic, what are you? I love your tan. I dated someone in my early 20s and their parents didn't like me because I'm a person of color. I messaged this white guy and then he responded with, hey, yo, F the police, your people make the best music. I was like, what? I have this accent, he, always went on, the only way I can define it is racist tangents, then he would look at me and just say, oh no, it's okay because you're brown, so I'm not a racist. Uh, no, still racist, still very racist. My partner was telling me that his friends often use the N-word. Like when a cool song comes on, they sing along. And I was like, I don't want to be in that situation because if I'm in a barbecue setting, everyone's having a good time. I really want them to like me. I don't want to be that person who's like, cut the music, turn into Rosa Parks. I think why guys on Tinder or on apps are looking for Asians are normally looking for submissive Asians. I think the fact I am a female comedian, it's very intimidating for a lot of guys on the apps. They don't want their story ended up in a joke. We had a conversation about kind of what racism means to me and what it doesn't, but also how racism is only ever really an abstract concept for her in this country. I've matched with a few white women. They're very into their meditation and yoga. Wellness is fine, but when I see crystals, that's a red flag for me. And if they greet me with namaste, fuck off. I'm like, no, <laughs> don't bring that energy to an Indian person. They think they're doing you a favor because there's this great white man who is trying to date a person of color, which makes them a better person. It's glorified for no reason. Every now and then, I will date a person who just assumes that I cook a lot of curry, that I know how to cook curry. I don't, I like my steak and eggs. I do feel like white people try to make an effort when they're in an interracial relationship. However, there's one thing to understand racism on an academic and intellectual level. There's another thing to understand it through lived experience, and they're not the same thing.
men approach me being like, oh, I love your caramel skin. I wouldn't say I love your Neapolitan sunburnt skin. Such an odd way to approach a conversation. It was weird to me that they would stop messaging me in Tagalog. How do you know this? You're like, you know more Tagalog than I do. You have some people that just have like yellow fever. Maybe when I was younger, it's like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like I'll take that, but definitely not now. This guy told me he wanted to colonize my butthole. And I was like, I was seeing a guy, he, looked me in the eye, dead serious, and said, my little island girl. I was so confused. I was just like, in what world do you think that that's an okay thing to say? You never really know whether someone truly likes you for who you are. I tend to avoid Greek boys because I'm gonna say it, they're mummies boys. I generally prefer to date outside my cultural background. I'm not entirely like the biggest fan of the Asian culture. Like I think it could be a little bit toxic. Identity wise, it's so hard for me to explain to a white person how conflicted I feel as an African Australian. Like, do you know what it's like to look like Whoopi Goldberg but identify as Steve Irwin? I've got this weird identity clash that I can't explain. I remember dating this uh, one white person. They mentioned that they would love to have caramel babies one day. Are white women out there saying they want caramel babies? At the time, I was still trying to figure out my own biracial identity. And so I, I, I was taken back a bit by that idea. Dip your baby in caramel. Why is that a thing? And also economics. If someone has come from a privileged background, it's very difficult to understand how your worldview is shaped if you come from poverty. Like I never had access to clean drinking water when I lived in Uganda. Like the first time I drank water in Australia, I was like, wow. And my neighbor was like, get your head out of my pool. I think people are well intended, but they don't realize what that might mean for you as an individual and how that may reflect your own understanding of who you are. Yoga is something you stole from us. We were just doing it as an exercise and you were like, this is a lifestyle. Shut up. Be open to the idea of experiencing other culture. And when you're welcome into it, you will never be hungry ever again. I know that Australianized Chinese food is not what they eat in mainland China. I still like it and eat it for nostalgic reasons. Learn a little bit more about the difference between cultural appreciation and cultural fetishization. I think it's one thing to like the food and the people and the culture, and then it's another to then silo your racial preferences or your preferences when it comes to dating. You know, at the end of the day, you're very lost people, <laughs> and I appreciate every single one of you. Just don't sue me, and I love you all. Thank you, guys. We gave you turmeric for your lattes and stuff. We gave you Color Run and Married at First Sight. Chess, we gave you chess, we invented that.